Welcome everyone to the uh, August monthly community meeting of the Transmart Foundation. We have this call every month on the third Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and we try to cover various topics of interest, give you an update on the foundation, um, and uh, other uh, often have a guest speaker. These meetings are recorded and will be made available on our website uh, within a day or so. Uh, as well as the slide deck for you to review and share with colleagues. Today's agenda is going to be focused on the foundation uh, largely, and uh, we'll start with an update from Keith Elliston, our CEO. Uh, we'll cover uh, a quick update uh, on our development of both uh, the Transmart 16.2 and 17.1 releases. Uh, and then I will give you uh, the first public uh, introduction and detail on our annual meeting, uh, which is coming up in October 25th to 27th. And we'll cover uh, some of the key aspects to that meeting for you. So let me introduce Keith Elliston, who will walk us through a foundation update. Keith? Thanks, Rudy. Um, if you want to pop to the next slide, you're running the slides, right? Yep, there should be there. Um, Fantastic. So just from a high level, it's, it's been a pretty busy uh, time for the foundation going through the, uh, the end of the fiscal year. Our fiscal year runs uh, from July 1st to June 31st. And uh, we ended up our uh, end of the fiscal year in June. Um, we had our board meeting to approve our new budget and our strategy for fiscal 2017 on the 28th. And uh, I'll take you through a little bit of what, what's going on there and what we're doing. Um, but it's been a pretty busy time from that perspective. In addition, uh, we spent a, a lot of time on the Transmart Pro Alliance. Uh, I want to thank all the people involved in that. Uh, we had our kickoff meeting on uh, June 21st. We got a little bit ahead of time of having all the documents signed and whatnot. We had everything signed and delivered on June 29th. And uh, the team is now working diligently towards the, the first milestone of the Transmart Pro project, which is uh, the 17.1 development. So there's a lot of work going on there. Keith Nangle, who is uh, chairman of the PMC, um, is away on vacation. He's on holiday. And uh, interestingly enough, Keith is a, an avid uh, mountain hiker slash climber. Um, he took a little bit of holiday early in the year to go climb the Grand Tetons in the American West, and now is uh, is off climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. So uh, he likes big challenges, and I think the 17.1 is a big challenge. And of course, Kilimanjaro is a big challenge. But uh, the Transmart Pro Alliance is going well. Uh, Rudy, will tell us a little bit more about that. Um, but uh, we're pretty excited about how that's moving forward, and that's been a, a big effort for the foundation team. Um, we're also beginning to, to put a lot more focus on the Open Bell project. There's been a lot of a lot of activity in the community, uh, a lot of interest, and so we're we're focusing as we go forward for the next couple of months on trying to bring that focus together. Um, bring it together, and our goal is to, to bring another program like the Transmark Pro Alliance together around Open Bell. So we have a lot of interest there, and I would say if anyone that has an interest in Open Bell, please get directly to me over the next uh, week or so uh, as I'm starting to put things together so that when we hit September, uh, we can hit the road running and, and start throwing that program together. Uh, but we're pretty excited about that. We've also, in the context of the Transmark Pro Alliance and a lot of work we've been doing with the board, been focusing on our legal framework. Um, as many of you know, uh, the Linux Foundation General Counsel, Karen Coppenhaver, has been working with us very closely and diligently, helped us uh, tremendously in, in pulling together the project charter, uh, the intellectual property strategy, antitrust strategies, etc., for the, uh, uh, the Transmark Pro Alliance. And uh, part of that is working through our legal affairs working group. Uh, we're in the process of establishing um, uh, a member's legal counsel network. Uh, to help us work through some of the, the key issues around the IPR policy and the antitrust policy. Uh, so if you're involved in any of those, um, certainly you'll be hearing from us over the coming weeks. Um, but we're working through all the issues around all the IPR policy, which includes uh, inbound licenses on code, outbound licenses on code, uh, various things around uh, open data as well. And the antitrust policy, which is, of course, collaborate um, in a competitive space in a, a pre-competitive kind of way and the, the policies that we put in place to make sure that happens. So a lot of, a lot of activity ongoing uh, as we've been working things through. Uh, I certainly want to thank the team and the members of the community that have put a lot of time and effort into this, but it's been a very busy time with a lot of good accomplishments. 
Uh, next slide, Rudy. So what I want to do is take you a little bit through um, what we, we talked to, through with the board in terms of our strategy for our fiscal 17. Um, first part of that is looking at how we've done over the past. So in, uh, in fiscal 16, uh, a little bit over a year ago, we set out a key set of, of goals that we wanted to achieve for the year. Um, the first of those was a complete production release of the next version of the roadmap, the, the 1.3 we called it a year ago. Uh, we now call that 16.1 with our new roadmap scheme. Um, and we were able to successfully complete that and to take that through our full code governance program. The first release that's gone through that. And as you all know, there are a lot of really nice accomplishments with the 16.1. And one of the most uh, interesting ones from my perspective is the easy install. So there's a scripted install. Um, I've personally installed Transmart now over half a dozen times. Uh, my best time, it takes a little over 45 minutes to get it installed on my platform. Um, and uh, I've been very pleased with how that works. Uh, the other thing that we've done in the 16.1, and it was part of our content committee objectives, uh, was release uh, of over 100 individual Transmart ready data sets that can again be loaded with a script. So now I, I personally, not only can I run, you know, build Transmart on my own home system, I can also install data, and I've done that a dozen times as well. So I'm very pleased with the team and the community coming together around the 16.1, uh, putting the code governance in place, getting that, that platform out. I'd like to thank, you know, certainly Terry Weymouth and Keith Dangle, who were very instrumental in that process, amongst others. Uh, but that was a great accomplishment for the team. Uh, second, uh, we wanted to ensure full funding for that 16.1. We initially had budgeted that at about 600000 based upon uh, what we'd seen in front of us. Uh, we were able to fund that using foundation resources and to do that within uh, within our budget scope. Um, and so I was very pleased at our ability to, to leverage community resources for that process. And that involves uh, a lot of contributions coming from Etrix, coming from Trait, uh, coming from uh, vendors like Thomson Reuters and Rancho Biosciences. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of community-based effort really made that work. Um, we wanted to initiate development of our 17.1 project, which we initially called the version 2. Uh, we were able to go through our requirements gathering, uh, get the requirements pulled together, form the Transmark Pro Alliance around that, fund it with a set of four sponsors, and uh, begin that project, which we did um, in, in uh, mid-June. So it was a very uh, arduous process. Uh, the team, I think, worked very closely with the community and the, the requirements gathering and pulling together the sponsorship putting together an alliance platform. Uh, tremendous effort on the part of the, of the team, and I think it's, it's been very successful. I'm very pleased that we have that going, and we look forward to a very successful 17.1 project uh, moving that through. Um, we also wanted to, uh, to fund that program. We initially targeted a $2 million uh, financing uh, on that. Uh, we were able to pull together uh, 690,000 in community contributions towards this for a $750,000 project, uh, the foundation picking up the bulk of the rest. Um, we are continuing to look for additional sponsors to come into that program and to continue the sustainability of the program, but we were able to pull together enough to successfully fund that 17-1 project. So while we didn't hit the $2 million mark, uh, I think we did, uh, we did pretty well there. Um, as I said, we wanted to, in the content committee, uh, develop a, a content strategy and resources and you know, the, the content committee, uh, Julie working with, uh, with Rudy and the rest of the key contributors, data sets coming from Rancho, from Etrex, uh, from Thomson Reuters and others. Uh, we were able to put together uh, 100 data sets, Transmart ready data sets that can be easily loaded directly into a new instance of Transmart. So uh, very good accomplishment there. Uh, we also set out to fund uh, the fellows program, that is uh, the release manager for 17.1, a dedicated resource for the content committee and the community committee. Um, I have to say this is the one thing we weren't able to accomplish. We were not able to find funding for this. Uh, we diligently tried. Uh, we'll continue to work through and see what we can do there. But um, let me put a I see my battery's running away. I'm not plugged in. But uh, we did uh, a lot of work towards that, and unfortunately we weren't able to fund that. But we will continue to focus on that for the next year. Um, we wanted to extend the reach of the foundation beyond Transmart. And in that, we worked with Linux Foundation and with Solventa to bring the Open Bell project under the umbrella of the, of the Transmark Foundation. And we will continue to focus on developing that program along the lines of the means that we have with Transmark. 
And then finally, we wanted to build a business development function to help us with the fundraising. Clearly, that's an area where we need some help. And so we, uh, we identified Ron Guerrero as a key expert uh, in the field, and we hired him. And Ron has been working with us closely on a couple of funding projects and contributing to the team from that perspective. So it's been a really good thing. So I think overall, uh, we did a really good job of, of, of completing uh, the goals that we set out at the beginning of fiscal 7, uh, 16. And uh, I'm pretty pleased, as the board was pleased, with the accomplishments that we were able to make as a foundation and as a community. On next slide, I tried to advance it really. I could. No, it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> I kept hitting the button. Uh, so the, the theme for fiscal 17, we developed this working with our executive committee, which is headed by Gil Oman and includes Brett Davis from Deloitte and Matteo Di Tommaso from Biogen. Um, go back. Or, yeah. Must have timing built in. Thank you, Dave. Um, so the, the theme for fiscal 17 is, is what we call leaning in. Uh, the key thing is, is that we've, we've had a little bit of retrenching of membership fees. We had a couple of members that have uh, have not continued. That includes uh, Oracle. We've had a couple that downgraded, Perkin Elmer and Deloitte, um, which have had a significant impact on our revenue base. Uh, fortunately, as a business, we anticipated these kinds of things. We built up a cash reserve in our budget. Um, and so uh, that's something that, that's been there for us to be able to invest in what we're doing. But where we think we are now in our development is we've been able to, to stand up the foundation, to establish key infrastructure, to take over and manage the roadmap, uh, to basically build ourselves into an entity that can take research-grade software and build commercial-grade products out of it. Um, and from that perspective, it's now time for us to, to really branch out and, as, as Brett would, would put it from the Finance Committee, it's time for us to lean in. Uh, and what that means is that we need to leverage the infrastructure we built uh, to grow to the next level. Clearly, um, given the funding we've been able to put together around Transmart, we need to expand beyond Transmart. Uh, we want to do that with Open Bell, with I2B2 Transmart, and other key projects. So expanding that membership base and that revenue base is going to be critical to our success in the future. Um, so those are that's one of the key elements. Next thing we have to invest in is a good PowerPoint platform so that we can actually have slides that we can present. I have no idea what I was going to say next, so I need that slide. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it on screen. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, the next key thing for us is 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 to, uh, you know, we feel that as a, as a foundation and as a team and a community um, that we don't want to shrink to profitability and, and basically be an insignificant organization. Uh, we think we really want to grow and leverage this capability. I was just down at NCATS talking with Chris Austin. Um, about what the needs are in the translational research community. And he said there's a, there's a phenomenal need for a, an outfit like Transmart Foundation to come in and help them you know, specify and build commercial quality open source platforms uh, that enable uh, research across the spectrum. And so we're going to work closely with them and with others, and we think we've got the right model, the right infrastructure, uh, the right capabilities to do that. The second thing that we're going to do uh, over fiscal 17 is, is really focus on the open data part of our mission. We've really had to focus on the open source to get Transmart under control, to get the roadmap under control, to get development and funding for that. Um, but now we need to expand that, and we think that the data thumb we had last year is a really good start, uh, but we need to focus on this open data mission. How can we make more data available on the Transmart platform? And one of the keys to this that's really important for us to think about is, is one of the challenges to open data is that data, as it exists by itself, is a non-copyright protected object. It's a collection of facts, not a work of authorship, etc. And that is why many data use agreements are very stringent and very restrictive. Uh, however, it's also clear that when we take data and we curate that into Transmart, when we create that Transmart Ready instance, we're creating a work of authorship that now has a built-in copyright protection. That copyright protection, in fact, enables us to be much more open because we can attach licenses to that and we can freely distribute data with conditions like you can't de-anonymize data and, and other kinds of things that we want to put in there. Uh, but we can do that and enable people to share peer-to-peer. -peer. And that's one of the key things we're focusing on as we go forward in, in 2017 is, is to continue expanding this open data mission, take advantage of the ability of Transmart to create copyright protected data sets and to build open data licenses and strategies for making these data much more shareable and collaborative. Um, and so that's one of the key things that we'll be doing there. The other aspect is, is to expand our focus from a focus that has been largely on technology to one that's focused on science and technology. 
And so to bring more people into the platform from the science perspective, a good example of this is uh, I'm going to meet with the translational research group at AstraZeneca um, in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, they've got a renewed interest in Transmar, particularly because it's now more accessible to their scientists. And our goal is to get engaged much more at that scientific level. Uh, the other thing for us in, in fiscal step of the team is to expand our project infrastructure. This is really a revenue driver for the foundation. It drives not just memberships, but project revenue, et cetera, which is going to be important for, for growing the foundation infrastructure and its capabilities. Uh, and that we're going to focus not just on the initial transmark that we put in place, but we've been talking uh, very uh, deeply with the ITB2 Foundation. Uh, we're really focused on bringing some funding and effort together around this ITB2 Transmart integration. And one of our goals in Fiscal 17 is to make that a reality. Um, I presented our plans for the ITB2 Transmart to the NCATS group, and they were extremely enthusiastic about this. So we're very pleased. We have some ongoing discussions going with, uh, with Zach Kahani and, uh, and Sean, <coughs> Sean Murphy and Paula Viak at Harvard, and uh, we feel very good about the, the, the collaborative nature of what we're doing and product of what we're trying to deliver. We also have a growing interest in Open Bell, and with a lot of the interest around artificial intelligence and machine learning in this space, we think Open Bell is a fantastic platform for enabling uh, tra translational research, and we'll be bringing people together around this. And then we have a, a strong focus on, on doing collaborative uh, data curation to make more data sets available on Transmart. We've got 100 now. Um, I've seen project proposals to bring thousands, even tens of thousands of data sets onto the Transmart platform uh, in a very dedicated, curated, Transmart ready way. And this is something that we are very enthusiastic about and will continue to invest in in 2017. Next slide, Rudy. So one of the keys to, to all of this is that uh, our budget for fiscal 17 is a deficit budget. That means that we are investing from our cash reserves into the projects and, and infrastructure that we're, we're, we're proposing for 2017. Um, that means we need to spend a fair amount of effort on covering that gap. Uh, we need to engage uh, new members in the community. We need to bring you know, more gold members on board, etc. cetera. Um, we are running at a significant deficit for fiscal 17. Um, to do that, we work with the board and we're establishing a new board committee uh, to engage board members in this activity. And that committee is called the Membership and Grants Committee. And I'll be chaired by one of our new members, our new board members, Jim Serum, um, who's joining us uh, from uh, his background at Hewlett Packard and Agilent. I said Hewlett Packard before Agilent. But Jim is a, an experienced entrepreneur, experienced entrepreneur and has been very heavily tied into what the government is doing. Most recently, he served as the chairman of the Board of Governors at NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, um, and is very well connected with NIH and, and other key uh, agencies. So Jim will be working with, with me and the team uh, to form a membership and grants committee, and we'll be focused on how we can bring new members on board and find new funding out opportunities for the foundation. So I, I ask you to, when asked, to participate uh, with Jim. Jim is a great guy. Um, he has chaired a number of important committees uh, for the federal government. He was the chair of the National Math Standards Committee that established the math standards about 10 years ago. Um, he's worked very closely with NIST and, and other key agencies, uh, Department of Energy and more. So he's a great guy for us to have on the board and to take this on for us. And the last key piece for us here is, is to reach out to the scientific community. That is, a uh, reach needs to expand beyond the, the IT and technology organizations, really into those scientific organizations. <clears throat> I've been specifically talking with the board about bringing new scientists onto the board of directors so that we don't just have um, R&D IT heads and technologists, but that we bring scientists that are end users onto the board and help us think about how we make these things much more useful to the scientists themselves. So that's, that's a key piece that we're doing to increase our membership and our funding and our capability. Next slide. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we're working on expanding that project portfolio. Um, one of the key projects is Open Bell. Open Bell, if you're not familiar with it, is um, Bell is the biological expression language. It was developed by a company uh, called uh, Salvento, previously called Genstruct, which just for uh, full disclosure, I founded, and I'm one of the inventors on OpenBell. <coughs> but um, the OpenBell framework is a framework for being able to take 
causal relationships amongst biomolecules and represent those in a computable format. Uh, it's been very useful for groups like Pfizer and Roche and others. Um, and what we're working to do is, is make OpenBell, which was open sourced by Solventa about two or three years ago, um, into a much more uh, industry penetrating enabling project. And uh, we have a lot of good support coming from Solventa, uh, coming from a number of key users of the OpenBell platform, both in academia um, and in industry. And so we look to see that developing uh, very nicely along in 2017. Uh, this will be a particular focus that I always spend a lot of time on. Uh, the second key project for us is what we've codenamed Transmart Clinical, but is the I2B2 Transmart reintegration. Uh, we've been working very closely with Zach Kahani's group at the biomedical informatics effort at, at Harvard Medical School on this, uh, with Sean Murphy, with some of the people at Partners. Um, we're very enthusiastic about bringing these together um, in 2017 uh, and being able to deliver not just Transmart as a standalone translational research platform, but also an integrated Transmart uh, I2B2 that allows us to work on the live data that these clinical trials and hospitals are putting together. One of the key advantages for this that we believe is that we're bringing together the 300 users of Transmart with the 150 hospital systems that use I2B2 and growing our collaborative community by bringing those groups together. Uh, basically having a seamless integration from the patient through to the pharmaceutical discovery effort. Um, we also have a focus on a number of open data curation projects. These are being driven through our content committee, uh, through Rudy and Julie, uh, Julie Bryant. Um, that focus is really to, to bring more effort on bringing curated data, data sets in Transmart and making those openly available. Part of that is the, the licensing around those to make them more easy to share. <clears throat> We're also working with groups like the Fox Foundation and others to make sure that we can modify the data use agreements on these things to make them shareable. Um, but overall, that group is focused on making a lot more data available in Transmart so that people can gain access to the data they need to, to facilitate their research. And then finally, you know, we, we are looking for new open source projects. We've been approached by several efforts, both academically and commercially, interestingly enough, uh, that are looking for ways to take a product that they want to open source and to create an infrastructure around that to move it forward. And so we are now talking to a number of efforts about new open source projects. And if anyone has an open source project that they're looking for a home for, uh, if it's in the biomedical research space, we think that we may be able to provide that type of home. Uh, the key goal of being able to take those research grade products, help implement a code governance and capability to make them into commercial grade products, and to implement a sustainability model around funding that can, can follow those products and make sure there's a continued investment in innovation. Next slide. Um, I think we've, we've talked a bit about open data, but we have several key things that we want to focus on within that. Um, we are expanding our collaboration with Linux, at Linux Foundation on open data licenses. This is being driven uh, by our council and Linux Foundation in Copenhagen, uh, working with our legal affairs working group, which is, uh, includes myself, Rudy, and uh, Jamie Katisha, who is a, an IP attorney in the bioinformatics space. Um, we're working to establish Transmart as the platform for open data collaborations. Um, we think it's very important to be able to bring people together with data, with capabilities, and be able to share those, either in a cloud-hosted environment or a, an on-premises environment. Uh, we are focusing on working with government and nonprofit research foundations to identify and bring new and important data sets onto the Transmart platform. Uh, there's effort ongoing at both Thomson Reuters and at Branch of Biosciences with databases that we know about in terms of things like ADNI and PPMI, but also you know, many other data sets. And so our goal is to, is to expand the reach um, of those open data sets by bringing them into Transmart. And then uh, another thing we'll be focusing on is, is trying to conduct a number of additional datathons. We think the datathon is a very good way to bring people together. Uh, the results of the last datathon we have have included a couple of key papers that are now in publication, some follow-up work that's been done on SNPs that are predictive of Parkinson's progression, um, and some very good work, and that was just from a three-day datathon bringing 25 people together on a set of data sets. So we will focus on bringing more datathons to the effort um, and look for people to participate in those you know, where appropriate. Next slide. Uh, 
Uh, one of the other things that we're taking advantage of is, uh, you know, largely through efforts uh, from Julie and from Rudy, um, IBM is, is now donating us a, a state-of-the-art power and computing platform. This is a pretty robust uh, computing platform. Uh, basically, it's got 144 cores of Power8. Um, each server of six servers has half a terabyte of RAM uh, and also has eight terabytes of SSD uh, storage. Uh, we've been working with the University of Michigan, who will, their, their uh, Michigan Institute of Data Sciences will, will host that platform for us. And this will be a platform for us to build a data science capability on top of Transmart. So we'll be working this through with IBM, with Michigan, and others. But uh, in the very near future, we expect to have uh, a fully fledged and uh, a fully fledged data science capability that allow us to do things like work with uh, machine learning integrated into Transmart, which we we learned about coming from the City of Hope um, as one of the key advantages that they're doing there, and they're working with key vendors that have uh, those types of capabilities. This also will be an interesting place for us to play with things like the Transmart Jupiter integration. Uh, that's been out there on the research grants for some time. Uh, the thing that we expect to do with this is use this for grants and contracts. We think we can create some new revenue opportunities and new collaboration opportunities. Um, so I, uh, we will be looking for someone internally to help lead this data science effort. So if there are people out there that you, you think that would be interested in participating in this, please let me know. Um, but we're looking really forward to adding this new scientific capability to the foundation um, as we grow into Fiscal 17. Next slide. So this lays out into a set of goals that we've established. We've gone over with the board of directors, um, and, and this, these are now the goals for Fiscal 17. Is first, we will execute on our existing collaborative project, which is Transmart Pro. Let's be able to break that 17.1 development uh, through its cycle, and then to put that into the release program and release that as 17.1, uh, and then moving forward as 17.2 and, and along the road. Um, we're also looking to expand that collaboration so there are additional member companies that would like to participate and would like to participate in 17.2 and other projects along these lines, you know, please let me know. Uh, number two is we'll initially uh, initiate at least two new collaborative projects uh, on the foundation. Uh, these represent new opportunities to bring new members on board and generate new uh, revenues in terms of project management of these programs and bring in new funding for them. Uh, we will also increase our membership revenue by 350k. This will be driven by our new memberships committee, um, and that will involve all of us working to bring new members on board, uh, to take existing members and transition them from maybe silver members to gold members, uh, and move things through from that perspective. Uh, one of our key goals uh, for 2017 is to raise money from new sources. So we currently have not raised any money from grants or any money from philanthropic sources. So this is a key focus for us uh, over the next year, and our goal is to raise at least $1 million from new grants or new philanthropic uh, donations. Uh, five is to broaden from an IT focus to include a new science focus, and we'll imagine that by, uh, we'll realize that by bringing at least three new board members on board that come from the science uh, instead of from the technology side. Uh, we'll also develop a new formal data science program and work to, to be bringing new scientific results and publications uh, from the efforts that we've driven through the development of Transmart and the development of the data science. Uh, we'll also develop uh, an open data IP and licensing strategy so that we can be one of the leaders in bringing new open data products into the public and expanding the reach of these open data products. One of the challenges is with much of the open data effort that's been put forward to date is most of these products are not in useful form and are not widely being used. And we think bringing them on the Transmart, putting them in the hands of translational scientists, that will change that overall. And then finally, one of the initiatives that I'm really keen about myself is because we've now taken the, the platform and developed a platform that can be installed by a naive end user like me, uh, where we can install data as a naive end user like me. Um, we think this opens up the opportunity for, for starting a citizen science program. That is, uh, we've seen a number of things where uh, the president has talked about, you know, putting data and capabilities into the hands of everyone so that the, the citizen scientist, maybe the high school student or the college student that wants to take on a project and, and could do it, has the ability to do that now because the tools are available. You don't need to have half a dozen IT people to take six months and a huge server to install Transmart. In fact, our goal is to be able to initiate a single command with your credit card on Amazon 
and be able to install Transmart with data and be ready to go. So uh, as a part of this, that we're, we're working on initiating a citizen science program, and by the end of fiscal 17, we expect to, to have that program in place and, and to be making some progress along those lines. So this is, this is sort of where we've been, uh, where we're going, what we're doing. Um, this really requires everyone in the community to get involved and, and participate in this. You know, the foundation staff is a small core staff um, that's part-time. Um, this is really a co collaborative community effort. Um, it requires us to, to spend some time on fundraising and getting new funds and new members. So I encourage everyone in the community to help us do that. But I think we do. We're building a really unique and powerful resource uh, that can stimulate scientific research in this space, in this domain. So uh, we're pretty excited about Fiscal 17. The board is pretty excited about Fiscal 17. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. Um, and I think we, we, we have a group that is really encouraged and excited about going and doing it. So I look forward to working with everyone over the next year and, and working to accomplish these goals. Okay. So Rudy, I think that's all I have. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. Uh, it's certainly a lot of uh, challenging goals for us. And uh, I can uh, echo that the, the Transmart team uh, are really excited to get moving on this and uh, try to accomplish the challenges that you've put forward for us. So what I'd like to do now is go over um, just kind of where we are on our roadmap first and uh, cover some of the, the some of uh, what's coming uh, and how we're doing along the, our plan. Uh, this was set out last year as our, our goals. Um, uh, phase one was 16.1 project, which did get released uh, a couple months ago. Uh, we are actively working on 16.2, which I'll give you a quick update on. Uh, but 16.2 um, uh, is interesting, um, first of all, because it brings a number of external projects together and new capabilities uh, to the platform. But also, uh, we, we are really getting a, a solid release project a process pulled together and uh, are working towards really uh, upping our game in terms of how we do a release, how it all comes together and, and brings all the, the different sets of codes from different places uh, into a quality release for everyone. Um, also, concurrently, phase three here is 17.1 project, and so we're, we actually have, we'll have two projects at the same time moving ahead uh, and working working hard on, on the challenges of, of having that, uh, you know, having two going at the same time and how we integrate these together. Uh, but again, we're pretty confident that our, our process that we're, we're laying out uh, is really going to help us with that. And what you'll see is the 17.2 project, kind of the next phase uh, is going to be a topic for us to be talking about at the annual meeting uh, during our roadmap discussions. And so starting to think about what are the requirements, uh, what are the types of things that we need going forward uh, as the foundation and as a, a, the key platform uh, in translational research. Um, talk about that in a minute. But, um, you know, our <clears throat> roadmap uh, kind of laying it out on a timeline. Uh, we did release 16.1. We're working towards a, probably an October release of 16.2. Uh, the development, uh, the specifications for 17.1 are completed uh, and uh, just finishing up the design work and development is starting uh, with a release of that uh, in the first half of 2017. And our target right now for 17.2 is the end of next year, calendar year. So just briefly, I'm um, hitting the 16.2 the release. Um, there are a number of new features coming in. Smart R, which we've heard at this meeting a couple of times, I think, uh, is an exciting enhancement uh, from the University of Luxembourg and, and ITTM. And uh, we're looking forward to having that built into the platform. Uh, an IPA, Ingenuity IPA connector, uh, is another potential piece coming into the release. Uh, an image, uh, the XNet imaging interface, uh, which is being built um, also. A couple of enhancements to the GWAS um, uh, being contributed um, by you know Thomson Reuters and Pfizer. Uh, some omics uh, subsetting of omics data that Johnson Johnson has been working on uh, as part of the Etrix and Trade projects uh, will also be coming into the platform and a number of ETL improvements. There's a lot more detail on these if you're interested in any of them in particular. Um, we'd be happy to, to talk about it. We do have our, our project management committee uh, actively engaged and, and monitoring the uh, development here. Uh, I alluded to our development process. Uh, basically, all the code starts down at the, the bottom piece um, where uh, each project has its own little development uh, sort of sandbox. 
uh, as these develop and, and are ready, they're getting merged into the 16.2 alpha release. Uh, and this is a, a managed process where we, you know, we bring these in carefully. Uh, they then get subjected to automated builds, automated testing uh, and integration testing. Uh, and then as all of the, once uh, the alpha has all of the different components that we want in this release come together, then that gets promoted into the beta release, which is a, a very tightly controlled check-in uh, bug fixing process, then that then will bring us to a full release. And uh, again, we, we use this uh, procedure for 16.1, which worked quite well, but we didn't have much external code coming in. And so this time it's, it's the, Kind of the real deal, bringing a, a number of different features, uh, as I said, uh, into this. And where we are today is that the alpha branch has been created. Uh, so far, we have only built in the Smart R version, but this went in quite seamlessly and easily into the alpha branch. And testing is underway of Smart R. And uh, now we're trying to, to decide which one's next uh, in terms of merging into this branch. Um, but we, we expect to have pretty much all the code built into the alpha within, uh, if not by the end of August, certainly in your first week or so with September and be able to start the beta testing uh, early to mid September uh, and uh, at least be at the annual meeting uh, in October uh, with a fully you know, release candidate uh, for us to all look at and, and play with. Uh, and then just to show you the timeline, you know, where we are today um, and um, you know, as we see moving out to get to the release, um, sort of in the annual meeting kind of a time frame. So that's 16.2, 17.1, uh, Keith Nengel's chairing this and, and driving this, although he's on a mountain somewhere in Africa. Um, the, uh, the current status, um, the, the Hive is doing the, the core development work uh, for this. Uh, the project itself is broken into three modules, uh, the cross-study and ontology support, longitudinal and EHR support, and integration to a genomics backend to the Arvados platform. Uh, and the, the requirements have all been laid out uh, and uh, defined. They're now going through a design phase where you actually, you know, we're, we're looking at how this is all gonna be pulled together uh, into the actual release. Uh, and the, uh, the full scale development will be starting uh, shortly on this. And so everything is quite well on track and they're, uh, they're getting close to, to uh, getting to our first milestone, which is the full design uh, and uh, release plan uh, pulled together. So watch watch for more news on that. Uh, we, we certainly will have a lot to talk about at the annual meeting, I believe. So that brings us to the annual meeting. Um, what I wanted to do is uh, to preview for you um, what the, the organizing committee has been working on for the last couple months uh, in terms of pulling together our annual meeting. Uh, this will take place at the University of California in San Diego. Um, I see that's spelled wrong on there. Uh, here, you know, we're going to have our, our usual meeting. It's going to be at the uh, at Atkinson's Hall, which is the the home of uh, uh, quite a, a strong data um, data um, uh, analysis uh, facility, and uh, we'll get to, to actually uh, make use of some of their cool tools there we hope during the, the different sessions um, during the the meeting we're going to have our usual uh, approach to the agenda um, and i don't mean to put this up here for you to read all of this in, in detail although you'll be able to look at it um, later but i'm going to go through some of the aspects of the agenda uh, so you get a, a flavor for kind of what we've, we've tried to put together so once again it's going to be three days uh, tuesday wednesday thursday october 25th 26th and 27th uh, and we're relatively similar format uh, as usual. Uh, on day one, we will end with a reception and a little award ceremony uh, at the, after the meetings. Uh, on day two, we'll have a formal dinner uh, in the evening with a, a dinner speaker. Um, and then on the third day, uh, we'll have uh, the morning, uh, another set of sessions, and then the afternoon largely focused on uh, the future uh, of our platform and the roadmap and where we, we want to have things go. Um, we do have seven keynotes this year scattered through the uh, the agenda. We were, we're quite excited to have been able to invite uh, some some really interesting speakers for us to to listen to. Uh, the speakers are run quite a range. Uh, Larry Smars, the the director of the California Institute of Telecommunications and Information Technology at UCSD, he kind of uh, owns the, uh, the the building and a lot of the things that we're going to see, including a, a, his data wall. 
and uh, his presentation will be talking uh, about uh, quantifying the evolution of a human body uh, and actually have a demo on the data wall. And as after the, his presentation, uh, there'll be a coffee break. Where we'll be able to walk through and, and look at his wall and uh, look at some of the, the data there. Um, we also have Rob Knight speaking, who's also from UCSD, uh, from the Center of Microbiome. Um, Nicholas Blomberg is coming to, from, he's the director of Elixir. Uh, we'll be talking about open data in action. Uh, and again, a very interesting talk. Uh, Professor Marcy Harris is coming from the University of Michigan. Uh, she uh, is a, a data uh, provenance expert uh, and is, we'll talk about data quality in federated research networks. Uh, Trey Eidecker, again, another local UCSD and well-known you know, to, to us, will be talking about artificial intelligent models uh, of the cell for patient data translation. Uh, Constantino Pizzalis is coming uh, also uh, from Matura, which is a, uh, a foundation dedicated to uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and we'll be talking about some of his work in that area. And uh, Cleanthus uh, is someone that I had worked with earlier in my career a little bit, and uh, He'll be giving us an overview of biotechnology in the San Diego area as part of an after of during our dinner speak. And so I think it's kind of a, an interesting mix of people. We'll have some science. There'll be some technology and looking forward on how to you know, use uh, some advanced data analysis tools. Um, and you know, I think it'll set the stage for a lot of the, the talks that we'll be having in the specific sessions. We will be running two sessions again of talks. Uh, this year, uh, track A and track B. We, we haven't tried to break these out as science and technology. I think that's been hard to, to force these into any particular uh, thing like that. But anyway, there, there will be um, two tracks running uh, and we've tried to lay them out in a logical fashion so that if you're interested in largely data, you'll have a chance to see those. If you're interested in technology, you'll be able to get to all of those sessions as they go through. And I'll show you the details in a second. And then we're gonna be running a series of workshops and uh, I'll show you those topics in a second. Uh, we did get a first brochure out. This was mailed. You probably all should have gotten this, um, but this is, has gone out and uh, you can, um, you know, to, just to get some interest uh, in, the, uh, in the, the program. And I will also shortly have a second circular, which will have the detailed agenda uh, laid out. Um, here are the sessions. So we, we basically have eight sessions uh, that will be running, uh, you know, sort of, you know, two at a time. Uh, down in track A, uh, we'll have a session focused on scientific applications of Transmart, where we're look at, really looking for, you know, use cases and things that uh, have been, um, you know, good examples of using the platform. Um, we'll have uh, a little a detailed session on 16.2 and some of the specific tools that are part of, of that uh, project. Um, uh, uh, Thompson Reuters will be running a, a data standards roundtable. They've put together a nice program with a few customer talks and, and talking about some of the te technologies uh, just around data standards. Uh, and then um, on the fourth day, a third day, we'll have a future technologies talk and cover you know a few different things like scalable genomics and wearable sensors and, and things just to talk about some examples of projects um, you know, that, that will maybe go into future capabilities of the platform. During down on track B, which is a little more focused on data, clinical, you know, is we'll have a session on open data, uh, some examples of, of using open data, and also a discussion, an interesting discussion where we're hoping that we're going to get Karen Copenhaver to come in and talk about some of the legal, you know, aspects and data ownership, uh, which is uh, always affects all of us as we try to use the systems. Um, integrating clinical data, uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to have you know, this will be talking about some of the I2B2 integrations that we've heard about and uh, some examples of how people are using uh, the platform with clinical data. Um, we have a number of centers of excellence at Harvard, at Michigan, at Imperial, uh, uh, at the, the Netherlands Cancer Institute. And we're going to ask, uh, we're going to be getting some updates for some of these centers and the types of projects that they're working on, uh, as well as some other new projects that are, are of interest. Uh, and then finally, the, the last session there is Open Bell, a session on Open Bell, what some people are doing with it and, and some of the capabilities. The one thing I want to highlight is that these sessions are going to have a couple of talks um, then then end with a, a roundtable. We'll get all the speakers back up and have a chance for an open discussion uh, with, with all of you who are attending uh, on you know the, the topic of, of that particular session and try to get a little more interaction. Uh, and then finally, uh, the last afternoon, we're going to really spend on the roadmap, you know, talk about, 
you know, what are some of the future directions um, that we, we could be going in, some of the things that we know we want to do, some things that we think we might want to be doing, uh, and um, really have some time to, to, you know, look at and think through uh, some ideas, but also to have an, an open kind of discussion and, and really try to, you know, kind of whiteboard out, you know, what, what kinds of uh, directions do you see, you know, the, the Transmart and, and the platform uh, need to be going, not just from a technology, but from a science, especially from a scientific perspective and from a data perspective. Um, and then the last bit I just wanted to mention is that, you know, we do have uh, a couple of workshop proposals where we're probably going to, you know, probably all of these will, will be on, you know, in the program. Um, but this will include, you know, things like um, looking at some new ideas, you know, uh, on the, the um, uh, different aspects of the, the platform, different types of interfaces we could have, uh, you know, big data, machine learning kinds of tools, uh, a session on open bell, you know, and so, uh, and it probably will run also a, a training class for some of the, you know, for new users, if, if that uh, makes sense. So we'll be working through these and, and you'll hear more about this as uh, this, this moves ahead. Uh, but uh, we, you know, we do have, you know, the agenda is laid out. We have it, you know, pretty well, you know, pretty well in hand, although we still need your help. Uh, a couple of places in particular, uh, there are a few openings left for speakers. Uh, I could also use a couple of session chairs. Uh, and um, we uh, also announced the time to, you know, we need posters uh, for our poster session. We will have a poster uh, competition again this year. Uh, where the organizing committee will review all the posters and we'll give out a few awards to the, the best posters in, in their view. Uh, so, you know, this is wide open. We can't accept posters up and really until the last minute, but please don't wait till the last minute. Let's get some of these submitted uh, as soon as you can. Uh, and finally, register. It's time to register. The, the registration is open uh, and we need to get, um, you know, we need to make sure that we know how many people are coming uh, you know, so that we can plan and, and so to have the best experience for everyone. Um, just to, to give you a, a quick view, you know, we have a couple of spots open for speakers uh, in a few of the sessions. You know, we could use a few more on scientific applications, on some future technology ideas, uh, on uh, new types of projects, you know, um, that, that uh, people are working on uh, and open bell. And, uh, and there's also a few chair session, chairing uh, possibilities here, not only we'll be introducing the speakers, but then you'll also lead the discussion group at the end of the session. So if any of these look interesting to you, uh, you can come to the website and um, uh, sign up. There's, um, you know, for poster registrations, there's a poster submission section on the website and you can go to there. Uh, and then we're also using Eventbrite this year uh, for our registrations. Um, we have had to put a, a fee this year for attending uh, the, the conference. Um, uh, but we've tried to keep it uh, as minimal as we can. Um, of course, members of the foundation, all the employees of members, member companies uh, can attend for free. Uh, and then there's a, a schedule there. Uh, we have put a 20% discount uh, so that if you register before, on or before September 12th, uh, you get a, a nice discount on the registration. So we encourage you to please uh, um, register soon so to help us plan. Uh, and make your travel arrangements to come to see San Diego with us. So that's where we are on the, the annual meeting. Uh, again, the organizing committee, we're very excited. We think we've got a good program pulled together and uh, we hope to see a lot of you there. I have uh, just a couple of commercials uh, that I wanted to just mention. You know, our training program is well underway. I try to mention this each, each month at this meeting. Um, we've had a, a good year already. Uh, we, we run this the last Monday of each month. Uh, the uh, all the training is donated by by member companies, and these are donated this year by Rancho, by Thomson Reuters, and the Hive. Uh, what's exciting to me this year is besides just having basic training for for new users, we've had a number of uh, advanced training on advanced workflows on ETL, uh, and um, I want to highlight this month uh, we have a brand new class being offered called Data Science. Um, it's the first time this has been offered, and uh, we only have like 10 people registered so far. It's uh, in the next week. No, it's in two weeks. Uh, so you might want to consider uh, coming to this. Uh, it's on August 29th, um, and it's called uh, Data Science with the Transmart uh, API. And uh, the guys from the Hive are going to be discussing, you know, the, the RESTful API, uh, how you can use it using Python and R, 
uh, how can you leverage the API, how do you get data out and the interface. So again, uh, interesting um, uh, the topic, I think. And so we've, it's, it's one of these classes that a lot of people have requested over time. The training class has been going great. We've got a lot of, you know, continuing growth of, uh, you know, people attending it. I also mentioned that our social media has, has really been going strong. So you can, you know, there's a lot of our information about upcoming events and all in our social media. And of course, we always want to thank our uh, corporate sponsors uh, as each of these meetings. So that's what we have for today. Uh, and we like to open it up. I'm sorry we went a little longer than we expected, but uh, we can open up for any questions uh, if uh, anyone wants to raise their hand or if you have a question to put in the question window. I see one. Oh, Gil said he's having continuing problems with transmission. I'm not sure. what that is. Well, the recording should be up on the website shortly, right? Rudy? Yeah, so that, that's right. Any, the problem with that. Should have okay. To. Sorry, Gil. Anybody else have a question for us? Comments? Okay. I don't see any hands raised. Um, Okay. Um, Keith, any closing words? No, no, I think you, you covered it well, Rudy. I'm pretty excited. I think uh, I would just encourage people to get involved with the, uh, the annual meeting planning. Now is the time if you're going to get involved. And uh, encourage people to register early. We're expecting a, a lot of registration this year. Um, and from a planning perspective, the earlier you register, the easier it is for us to plan. So uh, encourage people to register early uh, and uh, encourage their friends to register as well. Yep. Great. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. And um, we'll see you next month.